Great. Well, it's good to see you tonight. Um, Obviously, our budget didn't stretch for a Sunday night speaker, so uh, (laughs) you ended up with me. And also, kindly, the youth have given up their time to let you join in with them. Should we give them a round of applause? Come on. Come on. Usually, uh, they get to hang out with us here, but instead, they're going to be a part of what God is doing tonight. And uh, I'm really excited. I think it's just been a fantastic we can, whether you've joined us now for the very first bit of it or whether you've been here throughout. Uh, and what struck me was just being in the presence of Ian and Ruth. Uh, uh, we got to be with them on Friday night for some food and last night as well. And they're just people who embody a life spent serving Jesus and it just oozed out of them. Every conversation. Uh, and as a church, um, we should be just so grateful that they were here. They even gave us, uh, we were chatting earlier, the highest compliment that you could give another church. We wish we were part of your church. How, you know, how good is that? You, and that isn't me and Steve, that is you guys. That's the, the interactions they had. They, they, they meant it. And uh, I was just like, wow, uh, you know it's good when they say that about you. They weren't trying to run away as fast as they could. Uh, but uh, I really uh, have this on my heart, and I want to, to tonight is to really encourage you. What I really want to do is stir some faith that we're a servant of God who moves mountains. And what I really want to finish this weekend with is an expectation that he wants to meet with you. Um, I love DIY. I love doing DIY. Uh, it's kind of a family heritage that's gone through generations. And I love doing things. And recently, a few weeks ago, I had some time to do some DIY. And it's one of those days where it's perfect. No kids, no wife, just me and DIY. <laughs> uh, and I planned to repair some things in the bathroom. Uh, and I spent quite a long time, as these things do, uh, longer than I wanted, but I re- replaced this tile that was cracked. It was beautiful. Uh, uh, and then Emma came home, and uh, she goes to me. Oh, I go to her. I was so excited to show her this perfect tile. Uh, I show her the tile, and she goes, that's fantastic, but. <laughs> you see, I, I don't know about you, but but is never a good word. Uh, but what about this? What about that? But, uh, and what I really want to speak to you tonight is, do I have the slide, the but God. But God, I want to speak to you about that. Because when we hear the words but in a human context, it's never really good. But in a God context, it changes everything. Uh, This week I got the pleasure of joining Flo in Alpha, uh, and I got to bring my neighbours with me. I was so excited, been praying for my neighbours. They came along, uh, they loved it, they loved it. And what really inspired me in it is that they kind of wanted to ask questions of like, um, what's your experience of this? How did Jesus affect you in this? And in our group and after and in different conversations, people would share their story. And it often would go something like this. Life was a bit difficult, or I had this issue, or I didn't know this was happening, but God. But God showed up. And it was story after story of those words, but God did something. But God turned up, and I was so inspired by that, that I was like, man, that's why I want to speak about tonight. I want to encourage you this evening that whatever you're facing... Whatever pressures are on your shoulders, whatever decisions you have to make, whatever dreams feel shattered, whatever relationships are difficult, God wants to meet with you. But God, and if I went around the room, then I'm sure everyone would have a story of but God did something in the most remarkable way. And often, like I said, but in the English sense is never a good idea. If someone comes to me and says, Josh, I love that, but... It's never good, is it? It's never good. But in the Bible, the word but, God, changes everything. To the left of that word in the Bible is usually some human atrocity, some rebellion, some impossible thing. And then it says, but God, and then you have hope. You have transformation. You have change. You have renewal. You have things happen that you would not believe because of the words, but God. Over 40 times it says, but God. The earth was flooded, but God remembered Noah. Jacob's father-in-law deceived him, but God did not allow him to come to harm. Joseph is in prison, and Pharaoh has a dream But God helped him interpret it. Joseph's brothers intended him for harm, but God intended it for good. 
Joseph, at the end of his life, he's in the foreign land. But it says, but God shall be with you. David is being tracked by Saul. Uh, Saul is searching for him day after day. He's trying to kill him. But God did not allow him to come to harm. In the New Testament, they were blind, but now they see. They were lost, but now they are found. They were dead, but now they're alive. Paul says uh, in, in, his, in Acts that uh, they, they crucified him, nailed him to the tree, but he rose again. Jesus has a habit of doing a but. It says in Ephesians, we were dead to sin. We were lost, but in his great love, he made us come alive. Uh, and I just want to talk about the, the significance of that because I feel like, I don't know if anyone else does this, we love to put God in a box of what he can do through our own lens. I look at my own challenges, my own circumstances, the, my own uh, giants that I face and I see it through the lens of God through my eyes and the, everything looks so big. But actually God is bigger than that. Uh, but God has a, a thing about it that makes the opposite happen. It makes the opposite happen. People will come up to you and say, you're not good enough. But God says, you're his masterpiece. People will come up to you and say, it can't be done. But God says, with, all, with, with him, all things are possible. People will say, that dream is ridiculous. But God says, I can do it. The world says, stop. But God says, go. The world says, you don't have enough. But God says, I will supply all your needs. It's not over till God says it's over. And I want to encourage you with that tonight. And how do I know that? Because he's done it in my own life. He's done it in my own life. Uh, sometimes we always see people where they are and never where they've come from. Uh, one of the, my lowest points in my life is when I was kind of 16, 17 years old. Uh, and I'm a couple of years in to a family breakup. My parents have split up. Uh, and because of that, I kind of blame God for everything. I grew up going to church, but I'd be like, God, if you were real, you would never have allowed that to happen. Why would that happen? God wouldn't allow that to happen. Uh, and I decided, what's the point in life? I got very good at playing Call of Duty and my Xbox, and I would spend a lot of time doing that as a bit of an escapism when I was 16, 17 years old. So much to the fact that it affected my GCSEs. Uh, so much so that I, I scraped by a few. I had to resit my English, but I didn't do very well. Uh, and then it got to A-levels, and all my friends were doing them, so I thought I'd best do them. But there was a problem. I couldn't do the good ones. I had to do the ones that they would let me do with my poor marks. So I ended up doing uh, all the coursework heavy ones, design technology, business, IT. And the problem is I was no good at coursework because I just wanted to play my Xbox. So uh, it wasn't really going for me. And then what happened, uh, just uh, kind of icing on the cake, I got appendicitis. Uh, and I ended up having a month off, off, off my A-levels. Uh, so September happens. Can't do the ones I want. Uh, think, God, why would you allow this to happen? Uh, I start, uh, we get appendicitis. I miss a month. I, I go back in December. I'm overwhelmed. The pressure of it all, I can't keep up with this. I can't do this. And so I go to my mum, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I drop out of A-levels. 17 years old, and I have no purpose, no dream, no motivation. The only thing that I kind of want to do is the escapism of a different reality. I'm not saying computer games are bad, but it's the escapism, and I'll just do that. And now, as a parent, I'm thinking, my parents must have despaired at that moment. Maybe you're here and you've got a, a kid who's not quite on the page you wish they were. But there's hope. I say that because I come through the other side of that. But I'm 17 years old, no purpose, no hope, no dreams, no motivation. I'm one of those people that has no drive to do anything. And then uh, I'm doing, I don't even know, I'm doing nothing. And then my dad goes, why don't you come with me? I'll take you and your sister to a weekend away. So we go on this Christian uh, outdoor center for a weekend away. It was great fun, rock climbing, kayaking, all the things that I did for a bit. And I'm, I'm there, I enjoy it. And then on the Sunday morning, they do their like little AGM. Hey, this is how it's going, but we've got a problem. We need some help with housekeeping. We need someone to change beds, do toilets, and cook breakfast. I'm a 17-year-old boy. I have no interest in any of that stuff. And do you know what's even worse? Is voluntary. 
You don't even get paid for that. You don't even get paid for it, right? But here I am. And I can only explain it as a move of God in a 17-year-old because something stirred in my heart so strong saying, I should do that. And I can't explain that in any other way but God. Because why would I do that for free? I've got no interest. Wales, the internet's not very good. I've got not the same time to play games. But God, and I want to encourage you that God is the one who changes stories. I couldn't try. I could try my hardest to get out of that. But it's God who changed my story. I wasn't looking for it, but he found me. And I want to encourage you uh, with that. Like One of the most well-known verses in, uh, in the Bible, and um, Ian talked to, touched on it this morning, is that, but my God will supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. Now, this is not a, he's going to give me the, the Ferrari. This isn't going to be, he'll grant all my wishes. But this is the fact that we serve a God with an unlimited capacity. He's got a, a bottomless ocean, a limitless sky uh, of divine possibility to step into our world. And he does that. There's nothing that our God can't provide for. He's not forgotten you. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forsaken you. He says, I will do this. And here's a promise, and I stand on that. And, I, and, and this is the verse I want you to remember tonight. It's in Psalm 27, verse 13. And this is what David says. He says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want that to be your prayer tonight. To be confident in the fact that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know that because he's worked in my life. I love the big weekend. Uh, I love the fact that we've done it for the last couple of years. But in one way, it's sad because the big weekend two years ago was the last time I spoke to my dad in here, worshipping together before he tragically died in an accident. Now, the world would say that you should, this, you should can all that in. What's the point of this? But God says, I can change your story. If I look back over the blessings of God, I can stand here and say, I am confident that the goodness of the Lord will work in the land of the living, that he will work in us. He's worked in my life over the last two years. And I want to encourage you, whether you've had a dream shattered recently, whether uh, you feel like you failed, whether you've uh, been looking for a breakthrough and it's not happened, whether you've had a relationship kind of fall apart, whether you're struggling to get out of a situation, whether you're desperate for a loved one to know Jesus, whether you've just lost your joy this morning or you're feeling anxious, you can see the goodness of the Lord tonight. I believe that he works by spirit. Do I understand God's reason? No. Do I understand God's timing for anything? I do not but I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see the goodness. And this is what we do know. This is what we do know. It says, God says, I will bring dead things back to life. God says, every failure is forgiven. He says, every piece of shame, regret, guilt is wiped clean. He says, I restore what is lost and I push forward. Nothing more the doctors can do, but God can change your diagnosis. You can't do this, but God says, I am for you. Who can be against you? You can never break free from this, but God says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The dream you've lost, God says, I can give you a new one. The situations we face can be difficult. We all have these, these little battles we face, whether they're small or huge, but God says, I'm above it all. He brings hope into despair, love into loneliness, he brings light into darkness. When you add, but God, at the end of your story, it changes everything. It changes everything. And I don't want to settle for second best. I want to continue pursuing that. And I believe God is good no matter the circumstances. Uh, but it's, do you choose to see it? Uh, recently, uh, we, we've had to upgrade our car uh, for a growing family or change all those fun things. And... Uh, on Thursday, a couple of weeks ago, we, we obviously, we have a budget. Uh, I was trawling, done a lot of research uh, to find a car, uh, and I thought I'd found a great one. And I reserved it to go and look at it. We'd even planned out childcare to make sure they were a nursery, all the organized stuff. It was even better than that. On the Friday, the day after we were going to look at the car, our current car's insurance was finishing for the year. It was, you know, it was like, this is perfect. 
It's all going to fall into place. And on Thursday, um, I got a, a, it was lunchtime. Me and Emma were, were kind of getting ready. We were going to go in a couple of hours to see the car. And it was great because it was only half an hour away. And, and the other car seemed to be hours away of this specific model that we could afford. And uh, I get a text two hours before we're going to go. Sorry, we sold the car. <gasps> I know you're I, I was very angry. I have to admit that. I was so, I was, my, Emma can testify to this. My blood was boiling. I was angry. I was like, I'm going to write them one star trip advisor reviews. I'm going to, whatever it is, trust pilot. I'm going to send them at least 10 emails. And then I did realize there's actually nothing I could do because they've sold it. Um, and in my frustration, I was like, oh. I, was, I couldn't even describe to you how mad I was in this moment. But anyway, I, I, uh, I, I was like, Lord, what are you doing? This was so perfect in my eyes. In my eyes, it was, it was perfect. The timing of everything, all going to fall into place. The car we were hoping to get rid of had a leak, and it was all wet. And so it was just, come on, let's just get rid of it. And anyway, we, f- we, we do some research. And then it was one of those it-just-so-happened moments that we managed to see an advert for a car that just so happened to be 10 minutes away from Sheffield, where Emma and I were just so happened to be on that Saturday, two days after. And it kind of just so happened to be that, like, the car was a newer model, less miles, and a cheaper price. And we got the car. Hallelujah, right? And and I can look at that and think, that's a coincidence. But if I'm being honest, that's the goodness of God, because I'm not that lucky. If I was that fortunate with God's blessings, I'd be playing the lottery every week, and I'd be winning. And it just, just so happened that these things fall into place. And I said, they're but God moments. They're little but God moments, but it took a weight off Emma and I's shoulders. No one likes adult jobs. We were stressing about this car. Yeah, but, but God, he just moved things. He just, and, and then I looked at the reviews of the place we were going to go and look at. And they weren't good. I wish I'd done that first. But you know what I mean? It's like, but God showed up. I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is my confidence. And in Ephesians, Paul talks about the fact that you are saved for a purpose. He talks about that you are saved for a purpose. It says this, it says, uh, you were dead to sin. You were stuck in the ways of the world. And then it says this, But God, but God, in his great love for you, rich in mercy, made you come alive with Christ. And then it says this, for we have been saved, for his grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do a good work, which he has prepared in advance it says us, but for you to do. It's like, you, not only does God step into our world for those big but God moments, he goes, man, I've got something better than that. I've got a but God for you to change other people's lives. I've got a purpose for you. I've got things that you're going to do that no one else can do. But I always find this a problem with God because I'm inspired by the but God moments. I look back in my life and I see them. I'm inspired But then I realize there's always a challenge with God. Because my prayer is like, I want everyone to have a but God moment every week. I want our youth to have but God moments in their school. But a but God moment usually is followed by an if moment. A but God moment is usually followed by an if moment. And I'm using the English but moment there. Not a God but, but an English but. Because you've got to do something else first. There's a kind of a condition. It says, he will forgive you if you turn to him. It says, he will change your life if you put your trust in him. You'll find rest if you seek him. If you come to him. If you cast your fears on him, you'll find peace. You'll find him if you seek him. There's an if, there's there's an action, there's a proactive nature to finding God. Yes, God breaks through in the moments, but God often shows up after an if, if my people turn to me, if my people humble themselves before me, if my people turn up, and maybe tonight you need to bring something to him. Maybe there's something that is kind of got on, on your plate. I, um, I, I said this at the 18 to 30s, just before uh, we bought this car, we had a few adult jobs to do. Uh, 
replace the conservatory roof and sort the car out. Boring, boring jobs, but stressful adult jobs, aren't they? Uh, uh, and um, it's great being a, a kid when you don't realize these responsibilities. Uh, but the thing is, when, you, when I've got something light on my plate, I start thinking about money. I don't know if anyone else does that. I'm thinking, how could I maybe get some more money? How could I earn some more money? How could I save a bit more money? Where can we cut? And I realized that suddenly I was thinking about money all the time. I was becoming obsessed with it to the fact that like, I was thinking about it more than I was thinking probably about Jesus and other things. And, and we all worship something. And if we're not careful, we go where we're thinking. Uh, and sometimes I had to go, God, I give it to you. I, I need to give it to you. I realized I was trying to do it in my own strength. Maybe you need to give God something that's just caught on your mind. Maybe it's a fear. Maybe it is a dream. Maybe it is a pride and joy. Maybe it's your yes. I've shared this story before, but it's a but God moment in my life. I started at Bible college, and uh, I, I, you have a lot more free time. I know you're busy studying, but you also have a lot more time than usual. Uh, so I just thought, I've got a free time. Emma would go away as well every other week with her work. So I thought, I'm a bit bored. I'm going to download, I get my old Xbox out of the cupboard. So I got my old Xbox out of the cupboard and I started playing, playing it again. And I realized I don't really have much willpower when it comes to it. And I was playing it more and more. And when I was really meant to be studying, I started thinking, maybe I could just have a quick game of FIFA, play a bit of that, be United and beat Liverpool. All the good things that you do, right? And then I realized it got a bit bad. When I, I woke up, at like t- I sleep like, ask him, I sleep like the dead. Bam, bam, head hits the pillow, I'm out over, and, overnight. Uh, and I woke up at like 2 a.m. thinking about this game. And I went downstairs, turned the TV. I never do this. Turned the TV on, I started playing it. And then God showed up. I felt so convicted. I just felt God say to me, don't waste your life. That's what you do. I just felt personally, God whisper that into my life. In that moment, I just, I kind of repented to God. I was like, I give it to you, God. I'm sorry I've got this wrong. And it was great because it was early on in my, in my Bible college before I got into the really, uh, you know, the bigger dissertations and things like that. But it's those moments where we've got to go to God. God, I give what's on me. I give it to you. I want you to be the center. A but God moment. And what I really want to do tonight is I really want to make space to pray for a but God moment because there's a bunch of us here tonight and I bet there's some of you who could really do with a but God moment. And I just feel stirred that tonight is an opportunity to respond to that. So what I would love to do is I would just love everyone just to stand up and we're just going to pray and we're just going to invite God just to move tonight. He's already here. He's already moving. Mm. And maybe you just want to close your eyes uh, a moment to see, I help it not be distracted. It's nothing magical. And I'm just going to pray this, the, that prayer of just come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We welcome you here tonight. We thank you that you see everyone, Father. You see every single person in this room. You know every single person in this room. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray, Father, that right now in this moment, we would just bring to mind the thing that's going on in our lives, the thing that's uh, on our focus right now, the thing that we would love to be on the end of it, but God. We bring to you those things, Father. We just pray that even in this moment right now, you would just speak to us.